Uh, first, I uh, of course thank the organizers for allowing me to talk here. Uh, so I, I'm a finishing PhD student here at ICTS with Abhishek and Manas. Uh, but uh, whatever I'm going to talk today is uh, some some things that I have been thinking of sort of on my own. So if I make some mistakes here, it's not on Abhishek and Manas; it's on me. And uh, uh, so I have been working on open quantum systems, but I really did not know much about non-Hermitian Hamiltonians and how amazing they are uh, until this conference. So thanks for the conference also. So uh, yeah. So uh, and if you have looked at uh, my uh, abstract that I have uh, that I have given in the uh, that is given in the ICTS website, I have changed the things slightly. Um, so uh, about uh, so I've incorporated some things that I have sort of known. Uh, so that found in, in course of this uh, conference actually. So uh, okay, so okay, this open quantum systems introduction is of course uh, has been has been given already by Manas and Professor Aditi Mitra uh, that uh, you consider a system connected to a bath, and this whole system bath system plus bath is an isolated system, so everything is Hermitian, and then you integrate out some bath degrees of freedom and obtain an effective non-unitary dynamics of the system. Yeah. So the question that uh, I'm trying to answer here is, can time evolution of a quantum system by an effective non-Hermitian Hamiltonian be microscopically derived, starting from a Hermitian Hamiltonian and int integrating out some degrees of freedom? The answer is yes, of course. And then, as uh, people would probably expect, that there will be some quantum or thermal fluctuations. So. So what do I mean by so my most of my uh, this approach is this quantum master equation approach. So quantum master equation is just the evolution equation for density matrix of the system. So for an isolated system, it's just uh, this. Now uh, maybe for a non-Hermitian uh, evolution, one uh, may want something like this, which is uh, some non-Hermitian part added to it. And I've found this sort of things used uh, in literature also. But uh, when you are integrating out uh, some uh, Hermitian theory, you don't really want this because this does not preserve the trace of this, uh, trace of rho. So the, actually, this is this uh, Gordini, Kosakowski, Sudarshan, and Lindblad actually proved a theorem that if you have a Markovian dynamics and have, you want to write down a non-unitary quantum master equation which preserves all properties of the density matrix, it has to be of this form. And this is not of this form. So it has to be of this form where this H is uh, some Hermitian system operator, which encodes the unitary part of it. And then uh, this M is a Hermitian positive definite matrix. And this V is some system operator. Okay? And here is a, sort of the reference for this. So, uh, so and not at this level. You don't see something like this. But you will see something like this at some other level. So our uh, open system for today, our system for today is uh, the very general non-interacting system, which can be written like this. So, okay. So this is uh, basically the you can think of it like, uh, as uh, some sites uh, with some uh, energies, and then there are some hopping between them. There are no nonlinearities anywhere. There is no interaction. And so, as a system, you can uh, of course go to the um, uh, you can diagonalize this uh, matrix here, which is which will be a Hermitian matrix, and you can go to this eigenbasis uh, in term, you can write it in terms of the eigenbasis operators. So. And if this is, this is just the system, then it's then this is the density matrix. Uh, this is the master equation, and we'll also be interested in this sort of uh, correlation functions, which is sometimes called this uh, single particle correlation functions, or uh, I, I'll, I'll prefer to call this correlation mat uh, correlation matrix because the matrix, if you can make a matrix out of uh, these things, which you can, uh, then the, equation, the evolution equation for this is just in the matrix form like this. Okay, and this D is this D. Uh, uh, okay, uh, so that's fine. That's the isolated system. What happens if you attach a bath at, say, Elith site? Now, what is a bath? So I'll take a microscopic model for the bath. So the bath uh, is uh, infinite number of modes, just as uh, Professor Aditya Mitra introduced. So it's like just an uh, infinite number of modes here. And the system bath coupling is also just uh, this uh, uh, a particle here can just hop into the bath. Okay, I should also mention that either everything is fermionic or everything is bosonic. Okay, there is no mixture here, but uh, yeah. And the system bath coupling I'll take as weak because I'll do some perturbation in that. And the initial state of this full thing is taken as uh, this uh, direct product state. 
So some state of the system, I don't care what state of the system is, this entire system, but this bath has to be in uh, some thermal state. Okay. So now the question is, how does these uh, guys change? Uh, and uh, so, as I said, I'll do some perturbation theory. So this is the usual sort of bond mark of approximation, which is very standard in open quantum systems, which is bond essentially means I'll write down this, these equations correct to order epsilon squared. And Markov means uh, there's some uh, relaxation time of bath, which is sort of uh, much faster than system time scales. And uh, okay, so two notations here. Uh, one is uh, this, uh, this is called the bath spectral function. So uh, somehow finally all these uh, don't, won't matter. So it'll, you can write it in terms of this. The one assumption here is that you can write it as a continuous function. Okay, so the bath has to be something that you can write it as a continuous function. And uh, and uh, this NL will do, uh, give the Bose distribution of the Fermi distribution of the path. So uh, okay, so here is the answer. Uh, so the density matrix evolution equation changes like this. The important point to note here is uh, actually this is exactly as the form uh, sort of uh, given by this uh, GKSL, this Gorini, Kosakowski, Sudarshan, and Limblad that form. And essentially, the only thing is that uh, these guys have to be uh, positive semi-definite. This uh, has to be some matrix. And if you, write, if you write down the evolution equation for the single particle density matrix, then it, is, uh, it has exactly this form. And here's basically your non-Hermitian Hamiltonian. Okay. Uh, so some uh, non-Hermitian part, which you can sort of write uh, like this. So let me just uh, once explain what this uh, notation is. Uh, so, so we had um, some phi. So this was the thing that uh, sort of diagonalized the system. So that uh, this is a matrix phi, and this is the lth row. So, and this is this my notation for phi L, okay? So, this is the Lth row of the matrix, and what is the side L where the bath has been attached, okay? So, it depends on the sort of the single particle wave functions of uh, where the bath has been attached, and also the spectral functions. And uh, this Q, uh, you can see this sort of, this is sort of the, the dissipation term, and so you have some fluctuation dissipation, so this, this is not independent, and you have this NL here, which is the Bose distribution of the Fermi distribution of the path. And these other guys are, uh, so, and Q is Hermitian, okay? So it has to be Hermitian because this matrix is essentially Hermitian. And also this matrix is positive definite. You have to, you can uh, check that uh, positive semi-definite. So, so Q will also have to be positive definite, semi-definite. And um, these other things are, comes from some principal value integrals, which is sort of uh, horrible looking here. But the main thing is this form. Okay, so if you have many buts, Nothing happens, just you sum over uh, each contribution. So you still have this, and this is called the Lyapunov equation, which interestingly uh, like, is a very well-studied equation, and it occurs in extensively in optimal control theory. And um, what we have uh, got this equation for is such a system, which is in arbitrary dimension and geometry, uh, of a, in a lattice with arbitrary dimension and geometry, an arbitrary number of number of sites attached to paths, but we have done this uh, bond mark of approximation. Okay, so this is the Lyapunov equation, and uh, this is a well studied equation, and it can be the formal solution can be written like this. And you see, this is the evil time evolution by a non effective non Hermitian Hamiltonian, but you also have the noise or the uh, quantum and thermal or and or thermal fluctuations uh, that term coming in. So. It, as is obvious from here, if the real parts of eigenvalues of this is positive, then it just goes to a, a unique non-equilibrium steady state, which is given like this, which is uh, turns out to be a solution of uh, uh, this algebraic uh, Lyapunov equation. And uh, the nice thing about this is this is such a standard equation that it, you have, there is uh, uh, there are uh, efficient algorithms there to solve this equation. In fact, in uh, mathematics or something, you can just say solve Lyapunov and supply this. G and Q and it'll solve it for you. So it's a uh, much uh, like a large simplification here. And uh, the sufficient condition for this thing to happen is that uh, V plus V dagger is positive definite. Okay, so we have done, we have got a number of good things, but we have done this bond mark of approximation, so we'll lose something. So what we lose is uh, the accuracy. So the point is that uh, this we have uh, correct, so this uh, correlation matrices will be, correct, will be obtained, correct, this diagonal elements will be obtained correct to order epsilon to the equal zero. 
and this alpha nu, this octagonal elements will be correct, correct order, actually, squared. And uh, this can be uh, shown following some arguments that have been given in this uh, paper. So, so far so good, but how uh, do, they, do these things work? So in this paper, which was actually published uh, some time back, where we, I have not actually uh, identified this Lyapunov equation structure of this things, but uh, anyway, we have uh, checked it with the exact results for a simple system, and it, the point is it works pretty well. Okay, so this uh, formalism works. Uh, and then uh, next thing is, okay, so, so, so great. So uh, the other thing, we can just extend this to some very simple cases, uh, which may be very difficult in other languages. So AC dry from the baths. So temperatures and chemical potential of the baths are periodic functions of time. If that happens, then only Q the actually depends on chemical temperatures and chemical potentials of the baths. So all you have is basically just Q being uh, periodic in time. So you get an equation of this form where the Q is sitting is only in the uh, inhomogeneous part of the equation. So this is basically a tremendous simplification because this becomes a like really, really, really simple thing to solve. So we have looked at this uh, uh, thing in this that equation in detail in this uh, uh, paper, and we have actually also you have to worry about where this is sort of valid, and we have worried about that there is a proper protocol uh, in which this entire thing will be valid. Uh, uh, I mean you can arrive at such an equation by a proper way of driving the bath. Uh, and uh, so this is just one example from that paper, uh, we, which we have looked at in more detail. So this is uh, two sites, fermionic, with a hopping, coupled to two baths, which are the same temperature. But the, and the, but the uh, chemical potentials are periodic functions of time, and not just any period, just uh, um, uh, it's a sort of a resonance condition for uh, this uh, setup. And what is shown here um, are currents. So if you can't read this, so essentially whatever color is here, that corresponds to the color here. So one, this green is current from this side, this red is current from this side, and this, this guy is current from current inside the system. So a few things to note, which can be actually shown uh, more uh, analytically if you want. So is that the current inside the system is way larger than the current from the baths. And you have this, and what is being plotted is on the x-axis is sort of the potential difference, and you get this hysteresis kind of loops. And this is the long time result. OK, so what happens is the system reaches, uh, at the long time, it reaches a sort of a periodic steady state. And it's in that steady state, and you get this hysteresis kind of loop and uh, current voltage uh, thing instantaneous. Okay, and if you uh, just do an averaging over the um, uh, time period, then you get some average current, which will be non-zero if V1 is not equal to V2. So that is shown here. But the order of magnitude of this guy is extremely small compared to this thing. So essentially, the instantaneous current can be orders of magnitude larger than the average current that you will get in such a case. So these are some nice things, and these things actually you can, uh, actually you can argue directly from the equation. Here I'm showing this. Okay, so that is uh, basically uh, sort of uh, all I sort of had to say. Uh, so the evolution by, of, uh, via an effective non-Hamiltonian Hamiltonian actually comes as a Lyapunov equation of the correlation matrix for general non-interacting systems. And the Lyapunov equation is easily extended to cases where the temperature and chemical potential of baths are periodic functions of time. So these are the two main things, and there is a uh, a uh, bunch of open questions and work in sort of progress. So can we include uh, dephasing or nonlinear system with coupling interactions? And some very preliminary uh, results sort of show that you can, you may be able to do something like this, even with nonlinear it is in the system with coupling. So you have this, and then you basically get another, it, you still get a complete set of equations, but you get another contribution sort of here. Uh, these are some very preliminary things, and uh, so once we have this, so the, this kind of things uh, are often used, uh, systems described by this kind of equations are often, like sometimes uh, in classical physics, people make hydrodynamics out of this, 
So can we make, if we get this, can we make hydrodynamics out of it? And the last thing is, which is the obvious question in, after this conference is, can we make this non-Hermitian Hamiltonian PT symmetric? So, yeah. Thanks for that. For this uh, presentation. Now there is uh, time for questions. Comments? If not, then please thank again, not only this whole, this, uh, speaker but all the speakers of the sessions again thank you and the session is closed